Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another AHA VTS video tutorial series. My name is Aleem HLE, and I'll be your host with this basic BGP setup. And in this setup, we'll be configuring eBGP as it exists between two autonomous systems, in this case, AS518 and AS1211. And we will also be configuring iBGP as it exists between routers with an autonomous system. In this case, it will be in 518. We will also initiate these local routes and see how it traverses across eBGP and iBGP. So let's get started. I'll pull up my TerraTerm prompt here and we will start on router 3. Now before I begin, normally BGP will use directly connected interfaces to draw its update from. But in our tutorial, we will be using its loopback addresses. So I have already configured a loopback address of 2.2.2.2 on router 2 as well as 3.3.3 on router 3. These will be our interfaces that we will be looking for updates to and fro these two routers. So let me call back out my TerraTerm prompt here. We will go into configuration mode, config T. We will start the BGP process. Now, when I configure router BGP, I'm going to hit a question mark here, and we're looking for the autonomous system. The autonomous system that router 3 is located in will be 1211. This starts the routing process, the BGP routing process on router 3. The first command I will enter, and basically what you'll be doing in any future BGP um, situations, is a neighbor command. Our neighbor we'll be using is 2.2.2.2 to identify router 2. The next command we will enter here, let me scroll through the, uh, the buffer here, will be remote AS. This is a designation that is used to identify where this router is located. So we will use the remote AS. And what remote AS is router 2 in? Well, it will be 518. Once we invoke this command, we are telling the routing, the BGP routing process on router 3, which is in 1211, that its neighbor is in autonomous system 518, thereby establishing an eBGP process. We will also, while we're here, add these routes to it by using network commands. So we will enter 30.10.10.0 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. We are subnetting that. And also, by the way, I'm sorry, I missed the keyword. The keyword here is different than other routing process. We have to use the word mask, the keyword mask. Then I'll enter 255.255.255.0. We have to be very specific with BGP or else it will not add the route. So the next one over there, if you see, this is loopback 2, will be 140.12.0.0. Being that 140 is automatically a class B IP address, we can hit enter here because it will take its default mask of 16 bits. The next network here we will enter is 192.198.12.0. Again, I could hit enter here because it uses the default subnet mask. And, see me a little type in here. For the fourth one, it's just 20.0.0.0. Again, I could just hit enter because it's using the default subnet mask of 8. The only one that we need to do any masking would be if we are doing any uh, subnetting. But I'll also add this command just in case. No auto summary. I'm going to write mem here. Shift over to router 2. And I will do the same thing. Go into config T. Start the BGP process. If I could spell it right. In this case, it would be BGP 518. First command will be neighbor, followed by its neighbor. And what remote AS is router 3 located in? 1211. Again, we're establishing the eBGP process by initiating this command. And that is it. So we will go here and now we will issue the show IP BGP command. And we can oops, do this one for a summary command. And you can see here that we have established a neighbor 3.3.3 .3 .3 version 4 and the status is idle. 
I could tell you right now that this will never be established and I'll tell you why. Let's go back to the whiteboard here. As I said earlier, BGP normally looks for directly connected interfaces when establishing its relationship. In this case, we establish the relationship via this loopback addresses. And in theory, this loopback address is actually one hop within the router to get to that loopback address. So therefore, even though we have a, uh, a connection between these two autonomous systems and we can ping them, there is no way to get to this loopback address to service as updates. So we'll have to add two commands to that in order for that to happen. We'll start off on router 2. Go back under the BGP routing process. We will type that neighbor relationship that we established earlier. 3.3.3. .3. Then we will enter, uh, let's see here. I think we passed it up there. Oh, here it is. Update source. So we're updating our source to come from the loopback zero interface. In this case, from router 3, well, the update source will come from router 2. Also, being that is one hop internal to these machines, we will have to issue another command. Let me see if I can get it here in the scroll buffer the first time. There it is. Right here, eBGP multi-hop. And from the context sensitive help, it allows eBGP neighbors that are not directly connected networks. So we will type in eBGP. And it, in this case, the, the amount of hops is one, but I'm going to put three just to be on the safe side. I'll do a write memo with this. And I'll hop back over to router 3 and do the same thing. Config T, uh, router, BGP, uh, 1211. Oops. Neighbor 2.2.2.2. .2 .2 .2. Uh, update source, back zero. Save a little typing here. We will do eBGP. Oops. It won't work if I don't erase the whole thing. eBGP multi hop at 3. I'll do a write mem. And this neighbor relationship should form now. Now, I must warn you, BGP is very, very slow. Being that is the, in the protocol of the internet is designed that way. So it could take between 30 seconds to a minute and a half of this relationship to form. But we will do an IBGP sum and see what happens. <coughs> right now, the, the state is active. And we should see a neighbor relationship form in a few minutes. Oh, there it is. Here it is. A neighbor relationship just came up. And we'll do another summary. And you'll see that it moved from a, before the state was, the was active. Now the state is uh, four, meaning that it has received four updates from its neighbor. In order to see what has been obtained from its neighbor, we'll do a show, IP BGP. This shows the routing table of, the BG, of BGP. And you notice that we have all the four routes that we have designated earlier in router 3. But also notice these prefixes in front of them. These prefixes is, is, um, denotes uh, the status of which they are. As you can see, the, uh, the star identified that it's valid, and the greater than symbol represents that it is the best. What a combination of these two symbols in front of the network as a prefix, it can be safely assumed that it will show up in our routing table, being that we have a routing, uh, a, a routing protocol between these autonomous systems that it can reach those networks. So we'll show up, we'll do a show IP route, and lo and behold, these BGP routes are in the routing table of router 2. We will ping. Uh, let's see here, 30.10.10.1, and we do have connection. In the next part of this video, we will be configuring IBGP.